about your day so far? Have you searched the internet for latest news, checked the weather forecast to pick out appropriate clothing, or used a navigation app to find your way? That's what I did. These activities and many more are enabled by space technology in our satellite infrastructure. These satellites orbiting the Earth affect every one of us in our daily lives. We use their services for live tracking package deliveries, for watching TV, for connecting by phone and the Internet to our loved ones and our colleagues. They enable environmental monitoring, disaster monitoring, but also scientific research about the Earth, our solar system and the universe. What if I told you that the smartphone you carry in your pocket is computationally more powerful than these satellites are? And that operating satellite today can be compared to you managing your household toaster. Your toaster is a simple and yet very helpful piece of hardware. After a predefined time, it performs a predefined action, that is, roast until time is up and eject. If that roasting action is well defined in advance, the resulting toast is perfect. But under varying conditions, like type of bread, number of breads toasted before a degradation of the hardware, the result varies from not sufficiently toasted to completely burnt. You, as the user, can intervene manually by stopping the roasting process or by repeating the process until the desired toast quality is achieved. And so you, as the toaster operator, have to monitor only few parameters to successfully accomplish your mission. Spacecraft rely on a similar operational paradigm, but they come with up to 70,000 parameters for each single spacecraft to be monitored. And so operators take 24-7 shifts to make sure that your soccer game is broadcast without interruption. The human in charge provides the brain of the operations, not the satellite system in space, nor the software on ground being used. Why is that? Spacecraft are extremely expensive and complex. They are built slowly. And space is a challenging environment with two main groups of challenges. Now, the first class of challenges the spacecraft face is their remoteness, the vast distance between us and them. Household items like your toaster can easily be maintained or repaired if necessary. A spacecraft, however, is located hundreds of kilometers above the surface of the Earth. And so if a component fails, there is no service or repair. The distance is about 80 million kilometers and it takes the signal about four minutes to reach its destination. In addition, interplanetary spacecraft spent weeks without connecting to Earth due to planetary constellations or that cause planets or the Sun blocking their view. And so if you think all the intelligence should be located on board a spacecraft, much like a self-driving car, so do I. But it is not. As of now, it compares better to your toaster. Coast until time is up and contact Earth for further instructions. I've had the amazing opportunity to contribute to an interplanetary space mission by the European Space Agency. It's called Bepi Colombo and it's destined to visit the innermost planet of the solar system, Mercury. The goal of the mission is not having sent a spacecraft to Mercury, rather its purpose is to explore and uncover the secrets of Mercury by compiling as much scientific data as we can during the short time span of the visit there. If there is a problem on board, the spacecraft saves itself by transitioning into a safe mode. That means shutting down all scientific experiments together with all loads and equipments that are unessential for its survival. In this state, it awaits instructions from Earth. Before its issue can be solved, thousands of parameters need to be downloaded, analyzed and evaluated manually. That process takes a lot of time and a whole team of experts with all the creativity and ingenuity before we actually yield a solution. Correcting commands can be uploaded and monitored for success. During my PhD research, I thought, wouldn't it be great to have an artificially intelligent assistant system located on board the spacecraft where all the data is available? It could analyze the situation as it occurs 
and decide on appropriate actions to still achieve its mission goals despite any faults or failures being present. In this case, keep the spacecraft healthy while collecting as much scientific data as you can and link it down to Earth because otherwise the collection would be useless. Why are we not there yet? Because deep space missions are journeys into the unknown. They have a typical development time of around 20 years and the hardware on board is chosen somewhere in between in the Bepi Colombo example, probably 10 years ago. One reason for that lies in the second class of challenges the spacecraft face, that's the harsh space environment. Harsh due to extreme temperatures and space radiation. You couldn't just send your phone up into space. Although it can do amazing things today, and some have actually tried, it wouldn't last very long. The battery of your phone is dying when you try to take a picture while skiing, and when you leave it with the summer sun, it will soon demand cool down before using. Space is far worse. Orbiting the Earth, for example, you can expect to see temperatures between plus and minus 150 degrees Celsius. If you think about the spacecraft at Mercury, it's going to see 220 degrees Celsius and above. And so spacecraft end up using space-graded hardware that was designed, made and tested for space but that cannot support the algorithms on our computational wish list. The best we can send into deep space missions today is only a single core processor that roughly corresponds to that of a first generation iPhone and comes with only a few gigabytes of memory. When I used to think about space operations, I imagined a spacecraft operator in a control room using something like Jarvis, the intelligent assistant system of Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. Standing in front of a holographic version of the satellite, you would see at one glance if everything is just fine or where in the spacecraft a problem might be located. Well, it wasn't like that. Instead, spacecraft operations is like what you find in other domains. Long lists of procedures and protocols that need manual checks and searching through different databases before any conclusions can be drawn or upcoming tasks can be issued. That sounds really abstract, but you know that procedure too. It's commonly used from cars to household items to manufacturing machines. I was reminded about that when just last week my dishwasher ceased functioning and returned an error code S22. I needed to check the manual because I certainly know how to use it, but I do not know how to repair it. The manual sent me to the service hotline, sent me to an expert who checked for brand and model of the machine before he could tell me what was wrong and how to fix it. And so, yeah, spacecraft do come with manuals too, and a variety of storage structures for the information. If you're not in a space startup, these structures have grown organically over decades. Today, I'm working in a group that intends to bridge this gap between the operational dream and the reality. We are using modern technologies to analyze and visualize huge amounts of data. We come up with methods to set into context what we find, like commands that have been sent and reactions they have caused. We are exploiting machine learning algorithms to point out unexpected behavior and to predict future trends. During our work, we realize that a significant investment in IT, data infrastructure and software development is necessary. You need to choose your database technology carefully in order to be able to efficiently store and retrieve your big data. You need to come up with visualization techniques that comprehensively present your findings. And most of all, you need to take care of the security of your data. But what is most important is to meet the actual needs of the operators for our smart tools and algorithms so they can be really supportive and assist the operators in their daily work. And that's going to be even more important if we think about future missions. Because up to now, we've been talking about operating a single satellite or maybe two satellites. But think about having to control hundreds or thousands of satellites that future mega constellations will consist of. If there's artificial intelligence, neither in space nor on ground, the traditional approach of humans managing this constellation feels like a nightmare. 
Still, we don't know when a spacecraft component will fail. One minute you have a functioning machine that provides a valuable service, and the other, your satellite's gone. Another piece of trash cluttering the orbit. Today, there are about 10,000 satellites orbiting the Earth, out of which approximately one in four is currently operational. The rest of them is just trash, left to orbit the Earth for hundreds of years to come, together with hundreds of thousands of small debris parts from past collisions. And the future mega constellations are supposed to triple the number of spacecraft orbiting the Earth within the next five years. This use of the space environment is not sustainable and it's increasingly dangerous for future satellites. Imagine a thing as small as a coin hitting your satellite can potentially destroy it. But governments and space agencies do not enforce a clean space environment yet. Although there are many hardware solutions available, like aerodynamic rack saves, for example, they require a working satellite computer and software to function. If the satellite cannot react to commands, it cannot be removed from orbit. What if we could fly an intelligent assistance system with future spacecraft to automatically detect their end of life and take care of their proper disposal? Technology for self-removal of spacecraft is an example for such a concept I've been working on that autonomously detects on board that a satellite's time is up and it should be removed. My dream for the future is we will be giving a spacecraft context with knowledge about itself, its mission goals and its capabilities. In order to serve their purpose, space systems will be more resourceful in interpreting their own status, making decisions planning and executing them. I imagine the transformation from manual operations to the definition of goals with only some performance monitoring and adjustments. What if your toaster would automatically detect the type of bread you have? It would know your roasting goal and its own hardware status. It would autonomously choose the actions that lead to accomplish its roasting mission and produce your personal perfect toast. Doesn't sound so simple anymore, does it? And so that dream is quite far away. The space industry has many reasons to be very conservative in new approaches for designing and operating satellites. When I started my research 10 years ago on how to put more intelligence on my spacecraft, I was told it would be neither feasible nor useful. But I don't believe that. I have seen many examples to the contrary. Look how far we've come with modern technology. Look what your phone can do for you and how that feels light years ahead of what it could do just 10 years ago. I believe that we can achieve a similar transformation in the space industry. This endeavor is still in an early stage and there are many challenges to be overcome, but we shouldn't miss these opportunities. I've also learned that nobody can succeed alone. You might have the idea, but not the knowledge implemented. That's why we need to connect scientists, engineers, and experts from other domains like AI, of course, software development, but also from legal, politics, you name it. By sharing our knowledge and developing ideas, I believe that we can spark further research and push today's technology to innovate the way we operate future spacecraft. Thank you.